Hey everyone, welcome back to Science in 10. So here we are on spaceship Earth, but what does our journey through space look like? And how does this journey affect our lives on a seasonal basis? To explain, let's take a look at our planet's orbit around the sun and its rotation. As our Earth travels around the sun, it does so within the plane of the ecliptic, a two-dimensional surface defined by the orbital path of the Earth. Within this ecliptic plane, on average, the Earth orbits the Sun at a radius of 150 million kilometers, or one astronomical unit. But that's just an average. It turns out that our orbit around the Sun isn't perfectly circular. The Earth's orbit around the Sun is actually elliptical. Think of it as more of a slightly squashed circle. But really, only very slightly squashed. At its closest, the Earth is 147 million kilometers from the Sun. This point in Earth's orbit is known as the perihelion. And at its furthest, the Earth is 152 million kilometers from the Sun, and this point is called the aphelion. This 5 million kilometer difference is so small that it's almost imperceptible if we were to sketch out the Earth's orbit to scale. As the Earth is revolving around the Sun, it is also rotating about its own axis, once every 23 hours and 56 minutes. Wait a minute, I thought a day was 24 hours in length. Yes, it is 24 hours. Wait. Now I'm confused. So, here's the difference. A sidereal day is the amount of time it takes the Earth to rotate exactly 360 degrees, measured from the background stars, and the constellation Aries in particular. This rotational period is 23 hours and 56 minutes. A solar day, the length of time it takes the Earth to rotate so that the Sun is in the same position in the sky as the previous day, is 24 hours. However, because the Earth is traveling through space as it orbits the Sun, this rotation needs to be just slightly more than 360 degrees. And because the sidereal day is just a little bit shorter than a solar day, every four years we need to add on one additional calendar day to make up for this. February 29th, for a leap year. Next, let's take a closer look at our planet's rotation. Our planet's rotational axis, about which the planet spins, is a line that goes through directly through the geographic north and geographic south poles. But with respect to the plane of the ecliptic, this axis is offset just a little bit. Instead of Earth's rotational axis being perpendicular to the elliptical plane, it is tilted or offset about 23.5 degrees, though this offset fluctuates between 22.1 and 24 and a half degrees approximately every 40 to 41,000 years. The obliquity of the rotational axis causes different parts of the Earth to receive more solar radiation than others throughout the year. Here's how that works. The Earth is a sufficient distance away from the Sun, and the Sun is large enough that all the radiation the Sun emits, visible light, infrared, ultraviolet, etc., is approximately parallel when it reaches the Earth. But not everywhere on the Earth's surface gets the same amount of radiation. Let's compare the amount of radiation a 30 degree slice at low latitudes gets compared to a 30 degree slice at high latitudes. At lower latitudes, the sun is almost directly overhead, so the Earth's surface receives more solar radiation per unit area. But at high latitudes, that same solar radiation is spread out over a much larger geographic area. So over the course of the year, the low latitudes would always be warm, and the high latitudes would always be cold, right? Well, not exactly. Because the Earth's rotational axis is tilted, higher latitudes receive higher or lower amounts of solar radiation depending on whether the axis is tilted towards or away from the Sun. In December, the Southern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, giving the Southern Hemisphere latitudes more solar radiation and Northern latitudes less, which gives us Southern summer and Northern winter. Six months later in June, the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, allowing higher northern latitudes to receive more solar radiation, resulting in the southern hemisphere winter and the northern hemisphere summer. So with that, right now in, let's see, April, the obliquity of Earth's rotational axis is making it so the northern hemisphere is tilted more towards the sun. So I'm about to head out and enjoy a little more solar radiation per unit area. Catch you next time.